The Quad Ravella 2 proved to be my favorite speaker over the last 365 days or so. It's a stout three-way floor standing speaker with two six and a half inch bass drivers, one dedicated six inch mid-range driver, and a one by two inch ribbon tweeter. The Ravella 1, just over there behind me, is a classic stand mount speaker, which features one six and a half inch mid bass driver and the same one by two and a half inch high frequency driver. Both of the ones and twos share many of the same traits, beautiful design and solid sturdy cabinets. For this speaker, Quad also sent through their optional custom engineered stand. These speakers retail for $22.50 without the stand and $29.95 with the stand. Both the ones and the twos are statement pieces from Quad and the culmination of like four years of development. They are speakers that provide, in their words, advanced technology, striking design, and breathtaking performance. The speakers are available in high gloss piano black right there behind me, and one that just also features the sides in a polished real wood veneer. These speakers are super shiny, which means visible dust and fingerprints. Though I imagine that Anyone buying a high gloss speaker isn't really opposed to regular upkeep. Though I will say, I do wish that these speakers were also available in a non-gloss version because I really do like them and I really don't like dusting every day. The baffle is seamlessly joined, the cabinet is internally braced, and it's rigid and sturdy. Around the back, you get a single pair of binding posts and a base reflex port with these cool ridges that are said to smooth airflow. The speakers are on the larger side and weigh about 25 pounds a speaker. The stand is a striking design and it features the same high gloss paint finish as the speaker. It's a really nice complement to the speaker visually, though it doesn't feature any sort of cable management. So if you want a stand that does that, you'd have to look elsewhere. Recommended power for the speaker is 30 to 120 watts. Nominal impedance is six ohms. Frequency response is 54 Hertz to 24 kilohertz. I set these speakers up in a few different ways. My first pairing was with the Arkham Radia A25 amplifier paired with the ST5 streamer and the B&W 610 sub just to fill in that lower end. And this was part of my DJ setup. I did switch out the amplifier for my long-term loaner, the CXA81 from Cambridge Audio. If I'm being honest, these amplifiers sound remarkably similar, so I didn't bother switching between amplifiers. I just stuck with the A25 because I was doing that review concurrently. I also paired these speakers with the absolutely massive Rotel 5092 Mark II integrated amplifier. It's the best kind of overkill for a pair of bookshelf speakers. Unlimited power. <laughs> I stopped buying drum and bass vinyl from the UK in general just because the price of vinyl already expensive, but the shipping costs would just kill me, except I had to buy this. I literally just got this the other week. It's Gremlins and Jesta, the Lee Garden Historical Preservation Society. This album rules start to finish. It's a proper long player. Like you can listen to this from start to finish, but Focusing on the track, Trust, maybe my standout tune from this album. I mean, it's kind of everything. Played through these speakers, it's a full enveloping sound, really fast transient response, really nice deep bass. And when this track switches midway through and becomes something else entirely, it's an all enveloping sound, big and wide. It's absolutely wonderful and if I'm being honest, it can just be played on repeat at this point because I listen to it so much. The highs, while clear and detailed, aren't what I would have usually associated with ribbon tweeters. Like, they're really smooth, and these speakers, much like their larger siblings, the Ravella 2s, perform a bit of a disappearing act where the music's there, but I'm not really attentive of where the speakers are placed. They just seemingly disappear. Now, this does mean that you need to properly level match these stand mounters with your subwoofer just because if you want to fill in that low end, you want the subwoofer to complement the speakers. What I ended up doing was crossing my BMW 610 over at about 70 hertz, and I found that worked really well with these speakers. In the Quad Ravella 2 review, I played Hokkaido's Farewell Portrait from Clap Clap. It's a percussion heavy track with clear transients and tons of bass. So it's only fair that I ran it through the Ravella 1s when I was doing that because I had both speakers at the same time. I also switched out between the Rotel 1592 Mark II and the Arkham A25. 
The Rotel has 200 watts of power class AB versus the Arkham A25 with 100 watts class G. So there's going to be power differences for sure. But what I noticed is that with the Ravella 2 floor standards, they sounded warmer with the Rotel amplifier, but not so much with these. I also noticed that the bass and mid bass had more control when paired with the more powerful Rotel, but again, not so much with these. And I think it's because the Ravella 2 has a dedicated mid range driver and one extra bass driver. So I decided to try out a different genre entirely. Dragon Attack from Queen seemed like a really good option. And like before, there wasn't much of a difference between the amplifiers other than the teensiest bit of control with the Rotel, which is great because then you just have tons of headroom to play with. Like the twos, the speakers brought out tons of detail without sounding too forward. It was just enough that you can hear everything going on. And with all the lauded hype and the marketing material about the ribbon tweeter, I found it to be justified as the highs were not sibilant in any way that I would have expected from its design. Within their frequency range, these speakers sound huge. And depending on what you listen to and the size of your room, you don't necessarily need a subwoofer, but if you are a bass fiend like me, a subwoofer is definitely required. If you want to get the best performance, make sure you level match your sub with these speakers. That's something I always have a hard time sticking to because you know, I like plumping my bass. I ended up keeping the Ravella ones as part of my DJ setup most of the time, just because it was a boon to finally have a really nice revealing pair of speakers as part of my DJ setup. But I found myself stepping back from the mix every so often just to sort of take in the music because it felt like I was hearing tracks that I've had for a long time for the first time again. Now, the unfair comparison here would be against their own stablemate, the Quad Ravella 2s. I absolutely adore those speakers, and if budget was of no concern, I would own them right now. And yes, the Quadravella 2s sound bigger. They have an extra bass driver, and they have a dedicated mid-range driver, and they're also floor standers, so they're going to sound more expensive and bigger overall. But if budget was a concern, or you have a room that maybe doesn't fit a floor stander, and you don't need as large of a scale of sound, get these ones and a subwoofer if you need one. Now, a more fair comparison would be pitting these speakers up against the BMW 706 S3s, which I also have in for review. The difference is, I would say, are these dig a bit deeper as they are a bigger cabinet overall, but only just. What they do, though, is pull off more of a disappearing act in comparison to the 706s, which do sound a bit more forward and have a bit more of a prominent upper bend in comparison. In a word, these speakers are spectacular. And if you like shiny, big sounding speakers, give this one a listen. If you like this video, please consider liking and subscribing. I'd really appreciate it. Thanks for watching.